So in this session, uh, today we will be discussing our next chapter. The name of the chapter is the force vibration. As far as force vibrations are concerned, we have already discussed in our previous lectures also. The vibration produced due to the continuous force applicable, like in case of an IC engine, in case of a rotary pump, like fan is rotating, any kind of machinery in which a continuous force is being applied throughout the operation and the machine is vibrating throughout the operation, like in mixing at your home, a washing machine when it is rotating, any, any of the machine when it is rotating or uh, moving, it will have a uh, vibration into it. The, those kind of vibration on which continuous force is being applied to that, that they are known as the force vibration. So why do we need to study this kind of force vibration? That we have also discussed the phenomenon of resonance. Since the application of the excitation force means applicable force or external force we are applying onto a machine so that it may rotate or so that it may function to the desired application. So due to that, the frequency of the machine itself, natural frequency of the machine should not coincide with the frequency of the external excitation force because in that case the condition will reach to the condition of resonance in which the amplitude will be multifold and due to the amplitude will be multifold so the stresses induced into the material will be multifold and that is not desirable and material can fail at that moment so so as to take care all these factors so that resonance should not happen we will be uh, analyzing the uh, effect of force external application applied force on a on a particular system when it is vibrating till now we have been discussing the free vibration means you are not applying the force continuously once you apply the force and keep your hand on the other side and you are you are not applying the force anymore on that but as far as this chapter is concerned in this chapter the uh, we can do the system this is a spring mass damper system this is a spring this is your mass uh, so this is your mass and this is the damper this is a spring mass damper system and a force comes into the picture this force is f not sin of omega t since sin of omega t is attached to that that means this is a harmonic force means it is following a particular path means it is happening at a particular interval so we will be discussing the harmonic force obviously the two type of forces may be applicable on the vibratory system harmonic or non harmonic Maybe in your day to day life so many applications may be there in non, non harmonic forces may be applicable but in this chapter we will be analyzing the effect of the harmonic force only onto a vibratory system like a spring mass and a damper system how it will be affected. Now so the name of the derivation we will be doing or we will be analyzing is the force means force is that we will damp in damper is a vibration with a constant harmonic excitation. So this kind of excitation by this force, this is the external sign of omega t, this is a harmonic force. So that is why it has been named as a constant harmonic excitation means ex uh, excitation produced or induced by a harmonic force that is f naught sign of omega t. So since this is a spring mass damper system, f naught sign of omega t is applicable to that. Due to the application of this force, a deflection comes into the system. So this is equal to small x and uh, due to this small x deflection and this is the application of force, the damper get uh, actuated and similarly your spring also get actuated and elongated in this way. And due to this actuation of this uh, the complete system, the, we can analyze the RPD also as we have been doing in the earlier cases. So K is the resistive force or the restoring force applied by the spring or offered by the spring. Similarly, C x dot, it is the viscous resistive or restoring force offered by your damper. Third one is here the D Lambert force, inertial force. So I must uh, write its name. This is the inertial force. Inertial force as per D Lambert principle, which will be applied or which will be coming to the picture as the force is in the downward direction external excitation force so the m x double dot will be in the opposite direction to the motion and will try to bring the system back to the mean position or the equilibrium position 
So this is your complete RPD. All to total four forces are applicable onto that. One, two, three, and four. Now let us analyze this RPD. By analyzing this RPD, we will again apply the formula. That is summation of external and inertial forces must be equal to zero so that your system is in equilibrium. So T X in the upward direction, C X dot in the upward direction, M X double dot. This is your inertial force. This is in the upward direction, but As not side of me, that is, this is in the downward direction. So this is an excitation force. So this is in the downward direction. Obviously, opposite to all these three forces. So that is why it is negative equal to zero. So we can also write this equation as uh, in this way: M X double dot rearranging the equation. M X double dot C X dot A X equal to. So from this equation, M X double dot. So this is the second order differential equation. So since this is the second order differential equation. So its solution will be given by the two ways. One way is the complementary function that is denoted by capital X C, and second way of finding out the solution of this equation is given by uh, by, by particular modulus that is shown by the X C. Now let us see how to find out the solution of this equation through complementary function. We will learn how to find out the solution of this differential equation through Uh, complementary function. So this is the complementary function denoted by x c. X c is obtained by assuming so as to obtain x c. Uh, in case of uh, when we are obtaining the solution of the second order differential equation through uh, complementary function, one assumption is taken. What is that assumption? That assumption is there is no force at all. Means f not sine of omega t will be assumed as zero in that case. So our main equation that becomes f not sine of omega t over zero is here. In that case, m x double dot plus c x dot plus c x equal to zero. So this equation we have already done in in our previous chapter in which the damped free vibration system, in which uh, your force was absent. So this equation, the power equation is same as that of the damped free vibration system. So its solution we have already done in our previous chapter. So again, we can we can also we can use the same solution over here also to have to find out the complementary function. So as you see, this is the complementary function given by capital X one into e x two power minus theta omega and t sine of omega t t plus phi one. Similarly, put the value of omega t that is the frequency of the damped vibration that is omega and t one minus. Theta square into t plus pi. So this is the solution. Moreover, x one and pi one are the constant whose uh, values can be find out from the initial conditions like t equal to zero or x equal to zero. We have been doing in the earlier cases also. So now we will uh, in the next way we will be learning the particular integral. This is the second way of finding out the solution of a differential equation for the uh, force damped vibration. We have got a force damped vibration system by common uh, by a uh, constant harmonic excitation. The equation was uh, m x double dot c x dot k x plus x dot sine of omega t. This is the second way to solve the problem of particular integral. So how do we solve this equation through particular integral? Particular integral is denoted by x p. And again, a particular integral can be find out by two ways. One way is your analytical method. Second way is your graphical method. Graphical method we will be learning in our next lecture. To in today's lecture, we will be learning only analytical method. So from the analytical method form, now we uh, analytical method so as to find out x p or particular integral is also known as the differential equation method. Since we will be using the differential equation into that. So that is why it is known as differential equation method. So how do we use the differential equation? That is it. So x p is given by by two the particular integral is given by capital X sine of omega t minus phi. This is equation number one. So what does this equation means? Let us see. Where x p is your particular integral, capital X is the amplitude at the steady state or the steady state amplitude of the steady state vibration. Third point is phi. Phi is the phase angle of the phase difference. Who's between who? Between the excitation of force and the displacement. You know, आपको पता है कि आप force लगाते हो, तो force लगाते हो पहले force होती है, बाद में displacement होती है. तो यानी कि दोनों के बीच में कुछ तो gap है ना. 
there is some gap between. Let it be a gap is very small, maybe very very small, but gap is there. It means the force factor is heading the uh, your displacement factor. So we can show it, and the equation also shows like omega t minus y. Let us see from the graph how it is. So if this is your displacement factor. And this is your force vector. Force vector is heading than that of the displacement vector by an angle of phi. By an angle of phi. Phi angle is the angle of phi. So this angle, this thing is known as the phase, uh, phase angle or the phase angle. Omega is your circular frequency of the external excitation force. जो इस force जो force आपके ऊपर लग रही है बार बार इस तरह से half not sine of omega t. उसकी omega जो है वो उस force का frequency now let us see the solution of this equation that is a particular integral analytical method ke through jo chal raha hai point number 1 hamara ho gaya hai let us see point number 2 now let us differentiate hamare paas ye wala equation tha particular integral ka through the analytical method we will differentiate this equation differentiate it with respect to time d by dt of x p will be equal to d by dt of this equation this is the equation to the analytical method for the for right to find out the particular integral equal to iska maine kiya capital x mein x ka aise sin omega t into phi ka cos omega t ban gaya aur omega into t ka over c omega bar aa gaya so this becomes equal to dot of x p we may so likh sakta hu is the differential of similar thing so yahan pe ya moreover ye wala pura equation इसको अगर मुझे साइन में बदलना है सॉरी टर्म को मैं आई एड फाइव बाई टू सो दिस इक्वेशन इक्वेशन बिकम्स दिस वन सो आई हैव एडेड जस्ट फाइव बाई टू नथिंग नोट देन दैट सो नाउ अगेन ये वाला जो पूरा इक्वेशन भी राइट किया मैंने फाइव बाई टू लिखने के बाद अगेन आई एम डिफरेंशिएटिंग इट सो अगेन डिफरेंशिएटिंग इट आई एम राइट इट एज एक्स पी डबल डॉट दैट इज इक्वल टू सो ओमेगा मेरे बाहर आ गया साइन का जब मैं इंटीग्रल करूंगा दैट विल बी इक्वल टू ए माइनस cos of omega t will be so this becomes equal to this one and uh, uh, the solution i think this is a problem at this point sir we have done a mistake or okay? no it's clear okay minus omega square x sin of uh, omega t minus phi is equal to is this one we differentiate kiya hai okay? we have differentiated this term again over here So this term becomes over. Uh, we can write this term also. Omega square capital X sine of omega t minus phi plus phi. So this is your x p double dot. So we have been successful in obtaining x p, x p dot, and x p double dot. Let us see. So we know the equation. This is the differential equation for the force vibration, for the damp vibration through a simple harmonic for m x. डबल डॉट को मैंने पी लिख दिया तो पी के पर्टिकुलर इंटीग्रल के थ्रू मैं निकाल रहा हूं सो योर एक्स बिकम्स एक्स पी सिमिलरली एक्स सी एक्स डॉट का सी एक्स पी बन जाएगा सी एक्स पी का पी बन जाएगा सो एक्स नॉट साइन ऑफ मेगा टी मेरा ऐसे तरह से तो यहां पर मुझे एक्स पी का वैल्यू रख देना है एक्स पी का वैल्यू आपके पास है ये कैपिटल एक्स साइन ऑफ ओमेगा टी यहां पर आपको लिख देते हैं यहां पर एक्स पी इक्वल टू कैपिटल एक्स साइन ऑफ omega t minus phi so this is your value sp ka value rakh de sp double dot ka sp ka x double dot ka value ye hai sp ka value hai so ye wala pura value rakhne ke baad so i have written, i have also written here step number 7 the put the value of sp sp dot and sp double dot in equation 2 and we can uh, find out the solution so after putting these values we Three steps are there, so I didn't write those steps. You can write it in your notebook. So after that, I will uh, 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 I will make a equation such that we I will have a coefficient of sine of omega t on this side similarly, and cos of omega t coefficient of cos of omega t on this side. We will make a uh, we will make a difference of uh, we will make a differentiate all these things. Now I will compare. I will compare the coefficients of both sides. Now comparing the coefficients of both sides, f not will be equal to this much. Sine of omega t ka jo coefficient hai, this is your f not. Yahan se f not hai, aur idhar se iska coefficient aapka ye wala hai, so this becomes your f not. Equation number three. Right? Dusri taraf, cos of omega t ka koi coefficient mere paas nahi hai. 
जो कॉस ऑफ कॉस ऑफ ओमेगा टी का जो कॉपिशेंट है वो मेरा लेफ्ट साइड पे ही है लेफ्ट साइड पे मैंने ये रख दिया और राइट साइड पे मेरा जीरो है सो दिस इज इक्वेशन नंबर नाउ फ्रॉम इक्वेशन नंबर फोर दोनों उसको मैं इधर ले आया साइन ऑफ फाइव अपॉन कॉस फाइव करूंगा तो आई कैन राइट सी ओमेगा अपॉन के माइनस सी ओमेगा स्क्वेयर इक्वल टू मेयर एट साइन ऑफ फाइव अपॉन कॉस फाइव को मैं टेन फाइव भी लिख सकता ऑल्सो फाइव का वैल्यू अगर मुझे निकालना है टेन इन वर्स ऑफ दस मंच स्टेटिस्टिक वाइजेशन सो दिस इज द क्वेश्चन नंबर Six. That's all. Thank. You.